This is the story of India's greatest and most powerful leader of his time, who changed the course of history. This is the story of how Prince Sudarta, who used to live in a palace, turned into Gautam Buddha. And this is the story of India's glorious past, when it taught the whole world how to live and what the real point of life is. From India's glorious past to today's scientific and spiritual paths, this never-ending stream still helps millions of people figure out what life is all about. This is the tale of a prince who came to his mother in a dream as a white elephant before he was even born. A prince who grew up in a palace surrounded by many apsaras and luxury items. When this prince saw a poor person, another dead person, he was inspired to learn the secret of the universe. This made him wonder, if this life is a lie, why do we waste our lives on luxury? And that was where it all began. This special presentation tells the story of how that prince became Buddha. That was 2,500 years ago, when India's Vedic civilization was popular, but as time went on, it became showier. Instead of seeing knowledge and education as the most important thing, Brahmin society started to put family first. This meant that there were only two ways to be saved. Either a person stops eating and drinking as a form of penance and gives up on life, or they go to heaven after giving up on life through the paths of rituals. In simple terms, there was an extreme version of every system. But Buddha taught the middle way, which was ahead of his time and against society. When you pull on the strings of a vena too hard, they break. And if you don't tighten the next one, you can't hear the music. When the tension of the string is just right, neither too loose nor too tight, melodic music comes out. In the same way, he talked about taking the middle path in life. There's a peepal tree in Gaia, which is now in Bihar. This tree is now known as the Bauti tree around the world. This prince, Sudarta Gautama, became Buddha under this tree. Buddha means, quote, the enlightened one. Buddha became enlightened under this peepal tree, and the religion of enlightenment began here. The word Buddha comes from a title that means, quote, one who is awake, which means, quote, a person who has become aware of reality. A Buddha is someone who knows about the cycle of life and death but doesn't fall in love with it. A Buddha is also someone who is free from the bonds of worldly illusion. People think that Gautam Buddha, whose real name was Sudarta, was born about 2,600 years ago in Nepal, a beautiful country in the Himalayas. In Buddhist countries, the day Buddha was born is known as Vaishaka Day. For Gautama to grow up as a great king, his father, King Shudodana, kept him from learning about religion or suffering. King Shudodana said that no poor, old, or religious people should come along Sudarta's path, but what had to happen, happened. Sudarta saw an old man and a monk. They were different from him in how they looked, which made him wonder if he too would get weak as he got older. Everyone has to get old and sick at some point, so they should look for the meaning of life when that time comes. And everyone should try to find out the truth. When Gautam was 29, he left home. He lived a life of austerity and discipline. After 49 days of continuous meditation, he reached Baudi under the Bodh tree, a people tree in the village of Bodega in the state of Bihar. After that, Buddha gave his first sermon in Sarnath, a village in Uttar Pradesh, near the city of Baneras. The turning of the wheel of Dharma is the name for this event. Buddha kept telling people about the middle way for the rest of his life. And a lot of people used to come to his lectures. He died at the age of 80. This happened in 483 BC, and he died in a place in Uttar Pradesh called Kushni Nagar. This event is called Mahapari Nirvana. Buddhism is the world's fourth largest religion, with over 52 quarry adherents who all live their lives according to Gautam Buddha's teaching. 
Also, there are two kinds of people who follow this. The first are people who believe in Theravada, the oldest belief. Others are Mahayan Buddhists who mostly live in India. In India, Brajana or Tantra Vida is also a part of Buddhism, along with Buddha's early teachings. Based on the four truths of life, all people who follow Buddha believe that the goal of life is to be free from suffering, which leads to nirvana. It's interesting to hear these stories, but putting them into practice seems just as hard and strange. It's not easy for anyone to live alone, away from society, and then change how society works as if it were a rare event. People who do this are known as, quote, pioneers of the age. Listen to the next episode to learn more about what happened in Buddha's life. Gautam Buddha was born in 567 BC in a place called Lumbini, Nepal. His father's name was Shudodana, and he was the leader of the Shaka dynasty. However, the Pali written early act says that Shudodana was a king. His mother was the queen of the Kolia dynasty. Her name was Mahamaya. Many stories are associated with Buddha's birth, known as Jataka tales. Buddhism says that the point of all Jataka stories about Buddha's life is to teach people how to be good people. According to the Jataka stories, the birth of Lord Gautam Buddha was one of the many times God visited Earth. In these stories, the Buddha is shown going from one life to another and getting better and better as he goes. In Pali and Bodanta, there are stories about the previous life of the Buddha that are popular in Theravada Buddhism. It is thought that he gave them to his followers as Jatakas while he was still alive to teach them morals and values. There are 547 stories like this, but more were created in the north of Thailand and Laos over time and are known as Panasa Jataka. Historians say there is no clear proof that these Jataka stories are true. A Jataka story says that his mother had a dream about him before he was born. A beautiful white elephant gave the queen a lotus flower and then moved into her body. When the sages were asked to figure out what the dream meant, they said the queen would have a son who would either become a great ruler or a great aesthetic. It was said that he would either take over the whole world or become the Buddha, a being who has seen the truth. Some other stories say that when the Buddha was born, King Shudodana held a ceremony to celebrate. Shudodana asked the state's top astrologer to come to the event. The sight of Buddha as a baby astounded astrologers. When one of the most experienced astrologers looked at Buddha's planetary constellations, he figured out that Maharaja Shaka Kumar would have only two options. He would either become a great ruler or a great monk. Seven of the eight astrologers there said the same thing. But Drista Kundinya, the youngest and wisest of them all, said, I challenge all the astrologers in the state. This is Shaka Kumar's destiny, and he will become a great monk. The baby was given the name Sudarta at the naming ceremony, which means, quote, he who is devoted to perfection. When King Shudodana heard this, he was terrified. He thought, why would their prince decide to become a monk? He will rule because he is the son of a king. There has never been a time when the king's son became a monk. So, from the time Sudarta was a child, King Shudodana gave him palaces full of luxury and fun, so he would never think about becoming a monk. The stories say that three different palaces were built for him to live in. During the summer, Sudarta used to stay at a summer palace with a pond full of white lotuses. The second palace was for the winter season and had a pond full of red lotuses. The third palace was for the rainy season and had blooming blue lotuses. The prince's life was set up so that not even a shadow from the outside world could fall on him. Shudodana knew that no one had ever become a monk by living in palaces and hanging out with girls. Seven days after Sudarta was born, his mother died. 
After that, Mahaparajapati Gautumi, Mahamaya's sister, raised him. Sudarta grew up in luxury. He learned how to shoot an arrow, fight, wrestle, swim, and run from Brahmins who didn't know much about the outside world. Sudarta got married to Yasoda Hara when he grew up. Rahul was the name of Sudarta's son, who was born to his wife, Yasoda Hara. Sudarta became increasingly cut off from the outside world after getting married. Now, King Shudodana was sure that Sudarta would never be able to become a monk. We can say that he had everything, which is why he didn't pay attention to the outside world. King Shudodana would ask him about everything he did and wouldn't let even a shadow of society fall on him. Even Shudodana was now sure that after living such a happy life, it would be hard for anyone to leave it. The king thought all of this was a good idea. The royal family thought everything was going well, but Sudarta, one of the most important people at the time, was not yet up to date. He was destined to become a Buddha, but that wasn't happening yet. As soon as Sudarta was born, astrologers made different predictions. One important thing they said was that he would become a great monk. That is, he will leave the palace, which is bad for the royal family in every way. Since Sudarta was a child, his father, Shudodana, tried in any way he could to make him king. Even though he tried hard, Sudarta's mind would wonder about the great mysteries of life and death. Think about it. Would it have been easy to hide the truth about society if you were Sudarta? Sometimes you might think, what kind of life is this? Do all people spend their lives in palaces? Sudarta often wondered if this world was only about palaces and if there was any truth to the idea that there was more to life than palaces. He was eager to learn about the rest of the world. King Shudodana also had a hard time hiding the outside world from the prince for a long time. Then, Sudarta left the palace one day. The pomp and luxury of his life might have made him think he should know and learn more. They must have also known that there is life outside of this palace, since Sudarta had already enjoyed all of life's physical pleasures. Three palaces with all the comforts were built for Sudarta, and plans were made for him to learn martial arts and other important subjects for running the state. There were dances, songs, and other fun things to do. The maids and servants were ready to serve him, and everything was going well. The prince was busy with his life, and Shudodana was less worried about him as well. Then, one day, Sudarta told his friend and companion Chandak that he wanted to go for a walk. When Chandak heard this, he told King Shudodana, and the king's worry grew even more. Shudodana did everything he could to stop Sudarta from becoming a monk. After making all the arrangements, Sudarta finally started his journey. He is very happy to see the outside world. The outside world has lots of things that impress him, like green trees and plants, birds singing, wild animals, rivers, ponds, and beautiful villages. But when he started walking back to the palace, he met an old man. When Sudarta saw him, he was shocked. After all, he'd never seen anyone like that before. He asked his friend Chandak, Who is this man? Why is he walking bent over with a stick? Chandak kept quiet. But when Sudarta asked him repeatedly, he said that the person had grown old. Sudarta kept asking, What is old? Chandak replies, Prince, when you get old, your body gets weak. After a certain age, everyone gets old, and your ability to think and understand gets worse. Once upon a time, this person must have been just like us, strong, like a young man. But everyone gets old one day. This is how life works. Prince Sudarta didn't even know that people get old. Who could have thought that everyone has to get old one day? and there will come a time when he too will grow old. Can you think about what his life must have been like when he was young? He must have lived in a nice palace. What kind of schedule would he have? 
the one who didn't even know until more than 20 years into his life that everyone gets old at some point? Up until that time, Sudarta was like a child. He didn't even know how big the world was. All he knew was to ask questions, and he knew how to ask his parents different kinds of questions. But his father didn't let him ask such questions, and one day the truth of society and the cycle of life became clear to him. Now that he was getting more interested, he wanted to learn more about society. For this reason, he started going on trips more often, and his old friend Chandak went with him. When he ran into a beggar on one of these trips, he had the same thoughts again. He asked Chandak, What sort of person is he? Why does he wear old, worn-out clothes that no one else does? Chandak told him that he was a poor man. If someone doesn't have a place to live and can't find enough food to eat, they have to beg. And that's how he lives. In the same way, whenever Sudarta saw something new on the walk, he would ask questions, and Sudarta's friend Chandak would always answer. Sudarta kept seeing the truth about society, and as he learned more about it, he also started paying more attention to social norms and practices. One day, they met a group of people taking a man from his deathbed for his funeral rites. Sudarta is surprised and asks, What kind of person is this, Chandak? We've never seen anyone carried on the shoulders of four people before, and there are so many people going after him. Chandak tells the prince, Prince, this person has died. His time on earth is over. Sudarta asks, What is death? What does, quote, life is over mean? Chandak replies, Prince, everything living born into this world must die one day. That is, the one who is born will also die, and one day, everyone gets death by the law of the earth. Sudarta's mind was less confused now. He knew that everyone would die one day, and that he too would die one day. Now that he knew the truth, he was restless. He wanted to understand these questions about life and death. These inquiries troubled Sudarta, who one day came across a monk wearing saffron clothing. Chandak said that when the monk retires, he no longer has to take care of his family and keeps looking for the truth through penance. Sudarta now wanted to know if there is life after death and if people can be born again.